Hi, my name is Andrea Palasti. I teach Theory of Form and Elements of Visual Art at the Academy of Arts in Novi Sad, Serbia, where I tend to erase the boundaries between the art, the academia, and the everyday life. This is me. During the 90s, my mother was an inspired photographer. She would instruct me how to pose and how to smile. She made hundreds of these over the course of 10 years. When I finally moved from home, the only one who left to be photographed was my father. He was, of course, not that enthusiastic about being instructed. So my mother soon lost her interest in photography because my father was always at the same place with the same face. But she did capture something very similar to her predecessors. So I sometimes exhibit him in a format of a slideshow on a television. I even borrow his yellow pillow from the back of his back. Yokona was one of among the first artists to experiment with the notion of instructing and by this bringing closer the art and the everyday experiences. In her work instructional paintings, it was all about imagining the picture in our minds. But my mother didn't like when her instructions stayed inside my mind. She would make these beautiful um, collages as shopping notes and shopping lists, not to forget what I need to buy her. So she knew that I was a visual type and she knew that this will work. So sometimes I exhibit them also. I have to say that this idea of being instructed and giving instruction on a, on a daily basis is something I bring from, from home. For us, it was a way to practice the closeness and to pract practice the family. And based on these experiences of being an artist daughter, now as an artist teacher, I decided to incorporate these tactics into the curricula and into the lessons. Of course, I was also inspired by the wonderful art educator, Jeff Geis, who was advocating a principle of equivalence between students and professors, and also transforming the classroom into a laboratory and into a gallery space. So in collaboration with my students, we tried something similar. We created gallery kiosk, an ad hoc exhibition space from a former exchange office. And the idea was to exchange artworks. We also got the opportunity to take over the Theater 34 notice board during the summer months. So instead of the repertoire of their performances, we published artworks each Thursday of the week. It was some kind of a one work gallery space. In cooperation with the athletic Gymnastic club, Partizan, we built a gallery space from one of their dressing rooms. The idea was to bring art closer to the public. Um, and in this way, before or after a training, you could jump in for an exhibition or parents who were waiting for their children could also enjoy an exhibition instead of waiting in their cars. So this experience um, and engagement within the, the sports sector opened up a, a new approach for, for uh, practicing art. And um, in collaboration with my, my students, I initiated this project, Home Workouts. The title was borrowed from, from the sport terminology, referring to different single workouts and exercises that can be easily achieved with uh, minimal equipment, uh, in short time frame, and I would say minimal effort, and that can be performed um, in home surroundings. And together with the students, we used email correspondences um, to distribute these tasks among uh, each other on a weekly basis. Um, the idea was to exercise regularly, and just as we um, are advised to, to train our muscles, um, we were um, training creativity and uh, we were hoping to stay creatively fit. So just to get a glimpse of these assignments, 
Alicia Howard, a digital voice, will um, read through some of them. Wash your teeth in the rhythm of a song. Make a swing. Fill in a space. Make a mistake. Dance like a blue. Compose for a faucet. Make something longer. Interrupt a shadow. Make a hanger. So within this project, Home Workouts, the concept of play entered the classroom in an attempt to transform the art into everyday and, of course, vice versa, but also um, to reconstruct and somehow to remodel um, the academy into a performative laboratory. So we use the pedagogy of play, just like Brecht's Water Jam or um, Philip Corner's piano activities. Okay, I have to admit that destroying a piano was, was too radical for us, so we, we tried um, with an alternative, destroying an unnecessary object. This was more easier. <laughs> um, on the other hand, we were um, also referencing Rob Prout's project and his witty critiques of the art world um, with a set of uh, his 101 do-it-yourself ideas for, for art making. And there were also uh, weeks without assignments, as Ben Wattur suggested, uh, to follow no instructions. And my students of course, loved this one, and they were sending me regular reports from, from the bars. So, um, home workouts were using this model of exercising creativity as a, as a muscle, and just like in, in high intensity interval training, um, we were thinking fast, we were doing it fast uh, with objects that were, were close to us. Um, and, of course, without um, conceptual pretensions and, and technological pretensions. I will show you some of um, the students' works. Destroy an unnecessary object. Hide someone. Make an exhibition. Of course, you had to do it at home. Throw something in the air, which was stolen from, from Baldessari. Fill in a space. Make a mistake. Follow a line. Blow up something. Wrap it up. Leave a message. Make something that holds something on three legs. It was more abstract <laughs> thinking. Make a slide. Make a fountain. So I, I like to think of these uh, workouts as low resolution tangible objects through which we can practice the notion of thinking with, with hands, um, to feel the everyday materials, to feel the everyday objects. Uh, um, and maybe uh, one day some of us can make some more meaningful objects and, and artworks um, based on these prototypes. Home workouts can also be compared with the alternative uses task. The classic creativity test used to measure the flexibility of, of thinking, although we didn't use it for testing uh, creativity, but um, more to, to improve our creativity on a, on a weekly basis. So it can also be um, analyzed um, through, through 
these categories as, as fluency of ideas because we encourage the ability to, to produce quick responses, um, but also to be more flexible within these ideas, to have different answers in different domains and categories. Of course, um, uh, the home workouts were also encouraging the ability to come up with um, unusual ideas, or um, I would say to, to think outside of the box. And um, the last one, elaboration, um, would be um, our um, notion that, that all these prototypes that were created um, within the, the home workouts project is, is just a starting point for further development of the ideas uh, for future works of, of art. I would also like to think that um, this project is a, is a social practice where an open-ended social engagement is taking plan, uh, place with the goal of producing dynamic experiences um, rather than complex artistic objects. As an artist teacher, I see myself um, making a pedestal, uh, a base where everything else um, happens, where everybody else is making their, their own thing. The last exhibition was held in January 2020, just before the pandemic. And we didn't even uh, um, imagine how the home workouts um, could become a good survival kit during our lockdowns. During the four year um, of, of this project, there were more than 200 students participating, and I would love to thank them all um, that they were working out with me. And as George Brecht will, would say, exit. And I will now click the exit button and thank you for the attention. <laughs>